Hi, welcome everyone. It's Lonnie. And today is day 29 of Abide in April. The month is quickly coming to an end. So today's verse, well, the prompt for today was the word meditate. And depending on which translation or version of the Bible you're reading, you may not come across it very easily. I had an issue for myself trying to find it. Uh, so another word that could be substituted or a synonym for meditate would be consider. Um, also, it's more readily found in the Old Testament. So, Psalm 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So I put that here. And I used a magazine page to decorate that. I thought it was rather nice. Some lively colors there. So anyway, so then the larger portion, Hebrews 12, verse 1 to 3. And I didn't want to just take verse 3 because I thought we needed the context. So what I picked was the first three verses of chapter 12 of Hebrews. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross despising the shame, and hath sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So, it's a longer portion of scripture, but I think it's it's loaded full of nuggets if one decides to spend time there. I always thought the phrasing was interesting for the joy for the joy set before him endured the cross. What was the joy that was set before him? What he was going to gain by going through what he went through. The torture, the death, the resurrection, all of it, the betrayal. It was a hefty price he paid but he considered us worth all the trouble. On a smaller scale, um, when I first met my husband, it was online. Obviously, we weren't married then, but what happened was he went to a lot of trouble by today's standards to actually come and meet me because I lived far away from where he was. Well, the next province. I lived in BC at the time and he lived in Alberta and it was a 14 hour drive and he decided that I was worth the trouble. I was worth the cost to him. So he went and did the things necessary 
he had to quit his job, he had to find a new one, he had to find a new place to live here, he had to move his stuff. Granted, he didn't have a whole lot at the time, but still, he had to go through a lot of effort to come and meet me, so... Um, and just to meet me, he had to drive 14 hours just to see if there was even a relationship that could evolve or could come out of it. So, my point is, we go through a lot of trouble and we're willing to put up with a lot of things if in the end we get what we would call a payoff that was worth it. And so when Jesus went through all he went through, he considered that we were worth it. And that's why consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself. I mean, everyone was a sinner at that time except him. There was none righteous. But he went through all that so that he could gain us. He redeemed, he bought. It's quite overwhelming if you um, let yourself think in terms of how much Jesus went through to gain his church, his bride. So that's a uh, lot of writing on that page, but that's okay. It's about the word. I might color the word in, but even if I don't, that's okay. Anyways, fairly short one today, and uh, let the word speak to you. We'll see you again next time. Thanks for joining in. Bye for now.